Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Baidu's exam prep. So let me know whether the voice and the videos are clear or not. Yes. So it is absolutely fine according to me. The voice and video both are absolutely fine. So those who are preparing for the bar examination, this series is for them. because here we are going to solve questions related to the barc level so quickly tell me whether everything is fine and uh, share the session with your friends so that the maximum students can take benefit of it and also the series and the session will be more helpful and uh, engaging okay Yes. Now tell me quickly. Good morning. Tell to your friends also to join the session. Past. okay so let's start the session and uh, here you can see this is the parmanu series daily practice paper and we are bringing the super 15 question series also for the barc examination and before starting the session let me introduce myself so this is sakit verma and i am having more than 12 year experience in the field of gate and esc and i have done mtech from iit guwahati and cracked a different psu exam as well so i have very good idea which kind of questions can come in the barc examination because i have already trained many students i have taken feedback from the many students and i teach the subject electromagnetic theory communication system advanced communication system signals and system and ict okay so barc 2023 super 15 series we are bringing and that is from the 8th of march that is from tomorrow so don't forget to subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it because uh, for the all upcoming exams we will be bringing the different series for all of you and there is a fundamental series also for gate 24 students so the students those who are preparing for the gate 24 can also join this session okay and uh, here we have the a uh, free workshop what is the five critical things which you should do and you should not do if you are preparing for the gate 24 okay so that is the particular session where we will be bring, uh, telling you what should be your strategy to crack the gate 2024 and then let's take the first question of the communication a binary pulse communication system transmits a normalized pulse pt over a bit duration tb if the pulse pt has fourier transform p of f then the condition for the zero intersymbol interference in the absence of noise in the absence of noise what should be the condition for zero intersymbol interference yes akash tell me what is your answer janvi uh, okay let me show this by the last option you are not able to see out of okay are you able to see now check this once again okay so we all know that 
we generally study in this form summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity p of f minus n into r s or r b is equal to bit duration right here you can write r b also either you can write r b or r s so in this form which of the following is given so according to the correct result for zero enter symbol interference the p of f minus n r b is equal to t b that is the correct answer according to this option b will be the right answer the magnitude response of ideal equalizer for a rectifying distortion characteristics by t sync f t to the power minus j pi f t so the equalizer will have the transfer function as 1 upon the distortion term so 1 upon magnitude of sinc ft e to the power minus j 2 pi ft if i take mod i will get 1 upon t sinc of ft and here because it is written in this form so 1 upon t sin pi ft divided by pi ft so this t and this t will get cancelled and we get pi f upon sine of pi f t. So, correct answer is option C. Okay. Equalizer will have the transfer function which is inverse of the distortion term because the purpose of the equalizer is to reduce or to cancel out the distortion term. Next. If the minimum sampling frequency required to reconstruct a band emitted analog signal from its sample is 8 kilohertz, then the sampling frequency present in the signal is. We know that this fn should always be greater than or equal to 2 fn and it is saying about the minimum sampling frequency. So, minimum sampling frequency is exactly equal to 2 fn. So, minimum sampling frequency is 8 kilohertz. So, 8 kilohertz should be equal to 2 fm. So, fm is equal to 4 kilohertz. Okay. So, answer should be 4 kilohertz. Now, coming to the next question. An amplitude modulated double sideband suppressed carrier signal is given by 1 plus alpha m cos 2 pi alpha cos 2 pi fm into cos 2 pi fct. Uh, where fc is the modulating carrier then the modulating signal is if it is a am signal then what should be your message signal it is saying what should be your message signal Think of it, what should be your message signal? Compare it with the standard form which is 1 plus uh, modulation index and then cos omega mt and multiply it with cos of omega ct. Okay, so this is your standard form. Now you have to compare it with this. So, according to this, this is the message in a frequency, but here there is one extra term is also given. Then will it affect? So, you can break it in the cos A plus B, cos A minus B, and then you can multiply, you will get the exact answer. Okay. So, what do you think? What should be your answer? Think of it. FC is the carrier frequency, so remaining all will be your message signal. So that is option C. Next, which one of the following expressions represent a frequency modulated signal? Frequency modulated signal in the FM signal, we always have it always have the integration of the message signal. 
So integration of the basis signal AC cos 2 pi FCT that is your option D. Option D will be the right answer for this because we know that the standard form of the signal is AC cos of omega CT plus we can write it in the form of 2 pi KF integration from minus infinity to T M lambda d lambda in this form we usually write the expression so this is the expression which is matching with the result okay option d this is 2 pi fct and plus 2 pi this 2 pi will be multiplied the value of kf is 1 here next in a uniform quantizer, the quantization noise is in a uniform quantizer, the quantization noise is independent of the number of levels. So, first of all, let's write the quantization noise power, which is delta S square by 12, or you can write it as Vh minus Vl divided by L step size whole square divided by 12. So, the first option is independent of number of level of the quantizer. No, it depends on the number of level of the quantizer. Proportional to the square of peak to peak voltage. Yes, that is also proportional to the square of peak to peak voltage. Independent of the peak to peak voltage. No, uh, proportional to the square of number of level of the quantizer. No, it is actually uh, inversely proportional to the square of number of quantization levels. So, the correct answer is option B because it is saying that the Quantization noise power is proportional to the square of peak to peak voltage range. So, the peak to peak voltage range is Vh minus Vl and its square that is Vh minus Vl square, right? So, we can write NQ as Vh minus Vl whole square that is proportional. So, option B is correct. Now, in a digital communication system, the transmitted pulse is shown in figure the match filter output at the sampling instant. match filter output so output is equal to the energy of input okay output is equal to energy of input so what is the energy of input a square t by 3 so that is root 3 whole square width is 1 divided by 3. So, this is 1. So, the answer will be 1. Energy of input is equal to energy of input is equal to output P. So, the match filter output at the sampling instant T is equal to 1 will be having its maximum value. In a frequency modulation, the instantaneous frequency is In the frequency modulation, the instantaneous frequency amplitude of the carrier signal is varied with the instantaneous amplitude of message signal. Amplitude of carrier varies with the instantaneous frequency of the message signal and frequency of the carrier varies with the instantaneous amplitude of message signal. So, frequency of the carrier varied according to the instantaneous value of the message signal. So, the answer is option C, the definition of frequency modulation. If x is having 0 mean, then what is the probability that x less than 0? If x is having the 0 mean, then we know that if x is having 0 mean and Gaussian random variable is always symmetrical about its mean. So, the mean is 0, okay. The mean is 0. This is the density function. Here we have 1. So, if we calculate probability that x less than 0, the total area under the PDF is 1. So, we are actually calculating x less than 0. So, it is nothing but the area under this part. Okay. So, area is nothing but a half because the total area under the PDF is 1. So, this only left hand side we are calculating 
so we are calculating half of the area so the total area is 1 then half of the area is 1 by 2 so answer is 0 0.5 Now coming to the next question, if a single tone amplitude modulated signal at a modulation depth of 100% transmits a total power of 15 then the power of the carrier component is. So we know that the total power is equal to how much? PC 1 plus modulation index is square divided by 2. The total power is 15, the carrier power we want to calculate and the modulation index is 100%. So, it is nothing but a 30 divided by 3 is equal to PC. So, PC is equal to how much? 10 watt. So, the answer is 10 watt. Option D. Next question. In a super and receiver, the rejection of the image signal can be achieved by? So, rejection we achieve only at the RF stage. So, narrow band filter at the RF stage. Because, yes, at the RF stage, we get the rejection of the image frequency. The number of bits per sample of a PCM system depends on number of bits. N depends on what? Number of level, quantization type, yes. So, number of level, because if you increase the number of level, the number of bit is also increases. So, number of level of the quantizer. Not by the crystal oscillator. We remove the image signal at the RF stage, okay. Which one of the following is used for the detection of amplitude modulation DSB SC? So, in the double sideband suppressed carrier, which is the following you will use for the receiving detection? The ratio detector is for FM, the foster cell is for FM, product demodulator. Yes, so we can use the product demodulator that is nothing but a balanced modulator followed by balanced slope detector also for FM. So, it is all about FM. Answer will be C. Answer will be C. Product demodulator means simply you are using the local oscillator along with the low pass filter. Okay, this is the low pass filter and this is your product modulator. Uh, this is because we are using at the receiver side. So, we will use that product demodulator. Yes. Now, which of the following signal pair can represent the BPSK? Which one of the following pair can represent the BPSK? BPSK for binary 1, what is the definition of BPSK? For binary 1, we will transmit the same carrier signal without any phase shift. So, that is cos omega ct plus 0 phase shift. And if the binary 0 will come, then we have the 180 degree phase shift. So, cos of omega ct plus 180 degree. Okay. So, that is minus AC cos omega CT. So, minus AC cos omega CT and AC cos omega CT option C. Next, which one of the following can be used for the detection of the non-coherent BFSK? In the non-coherent BFSK, what we use? Non-coherent. We use the annular detector. First of all, we use the bandpass filter over here. There are two bandpass filter in the demodulator. Yes, Pinky, correct. 
what is the block diagram if you can recall that is your comparator like this this is a block diagram uh, here we have the bfsk signal at the input because it is a receiver so here we have the band pass filter okay which will be centered at high frequency and uh, there is another band pass filter which will be centered at low frequency okay then after that we have the envelope detector this is envelope detector Okay, and then we have here as op-amp plus V set and minus V set. Okay, so this is the demodulator block diagram. So envelope detector is used. Bits of the duration TB are to be transmitted using the BPSK modulation of a carrier frequency FC. The power density uh, of the transmitted signal has the first result at the normalized frequency what should be the answer yes f minus fc is equal to 2 correct the probability of a bit error of a bfsk what is the probability of error of bfsk in terms of error function what is the probability of error of BFSK in terms of complementary error function? Because we generally used to write in terms of Q function, then what should be your answer according to the complementary error function? No, answer is B because the relation between the Q function and the Complementary error function is this is uh, q of x is equal to complementary error function of x upon root 2 and divided by 2. Okay, so 1 by 2 here and then q of x. Okay, so according to this, you can convert this complementary error function in the form of this expression. Next, for a given transmitted pulse PT, for a given transmitted pulse PT, what should be the impulse response of a filter match? What is the impulse response for this signal? of a match filter for a given impulse signal pt 0 to t what is the impulse response Yes, impulse response is D, P of capital T minus T 0 to T. Because we know that the impulse response of a match filter is given as P of capital T minus a small t. Okay, that is the general expression it is asking for. The multiple access communication scheme in which each user is allocated the full available channel a spectrum for a specified duration of the time is known as yes this is nothing but a time division multiple axis what is the entropy of the signal what is the entropy of the signal if there are four signals m1 m2 m3 m4 is given and the probabilities are given then what is the entropy of the signal
सी यस दिस इज नथिंग बट एंट्रोपी एच ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन बाय टू लॉग बेस टू इनवर्स ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट इज टू देन वन बाय फोर लॉग बेस टू इनवर्स ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट इज फोर प्लस टू इंटू वन बाय एट लॉग बेस टू इनवर्स ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट इज एट सो वी गेट वन बाय टू प्लस टू बाय फोर विच इज अगेन वन बाय टू एंड हियर वी गेट थ्री अपॉन फोर so it is 1 plus 3 upon 4 which is 7 by 4 so answer is option c absolutely fine now answer is question What is the answer of this question? A signal has a signal to contact and noise ratio 63 and bandwidth. We have to calculate the bit rate, maximum bit rate. So we know that for error free transmission, okay, for error free transmission. the channel capacity should be greater than equal to r so what is the channel capacity this is nothing but a b log base to 1 plus signal to noise ratio should be greater than equal to r so the bandwidth is 1200 and it is log base to 1 plus 63 greater than equal to r so it is 6 and into 1200 so R should be maximum of seventy two hundred. It is asking for maximum data rate. So the maximum data rate can be seventy two hundred. Option D. Next, what is the sampling frequency of this signal? what is the sampling frequency we know that for multi tone signal the sampling frequency is given by twice of maximum frequency present maximum frequency present in the signal to be sampled okay so what is the maximum frequency this will have the frequency 3w this will have the frequency w and its frequency is 0 so the maximum frequency is 3w so answer is 6w option b next try to solve this consider an am signal if ps denotes the power in any one of the sideband and pt denotes the power total power which one of the following statement is true if the ac is equal to 2am then if i represent it in the standard form it will become 1 plus 
am upon ac cos omega mt cos omega ct so the modulation index is am upon ac the relation is given as ac is equal to 2 am that is 1 by 2 okay so the modulation index is 1 upon 2 am from here am upon ac if you will calculate it is 1 by 2 now it is asking what is the relation between the sideband power and the total power. So what is the sideband power? The sideband power is given by PC MA square divided by any of the sideband. So it is PC MA square divided by 4. And what is the total power? The total power is PC. PS denotes the power in the any of the sideband frequency. Okay, so I find. So, total power Pt is equal to 1 plus Ma square divided by 2. So, in terms of Pc, it is 1 by 16 and it is 1 plus 1 by 8. So, it is Pc is equal to 9 upon 8. This is Pt. So, what is the relation? If I divide it, suppose Pt upon Psb, then it is Pc upon 16, 9 Pc upon 8, that's right, 9 Pc upon 8, and this is Pc upon 16. So, this Pc and Pc will get cancelled, and we will get 18. So, Pt is equal to 18 Ps, that is option D. Okay, from here you can see that the total power is 16 times of, sorry, 18 times of PB. 18 times of PSB, that is sideband power. Okay. Next. In a super heterodyne receiver, if the intermediate frequency is 10.7, the carrier frequency is 89.6, the image frequency is. Image frequency by default is given by F signal frequency plus 2 into intermediate frequency. So, this is 89.6 plus 2 into 10.7. So, it is 89.6 plus 21.4. Now, what is the value? Overall 10.7 plus 89.6 into 2. That triple 1. So, it is 21.4 now. So, it is 21.4 111 megahertz. Answer is option C. Yes. Now the maximum frequency deviation, maximum frequency deviation is given by 1 upon 2 pi. Here d5 by dt. Okay. So, 1 upon 2 pi d by dt of pi that is k into minus integration to t m tau d tau. Maximum frequency division or and then you can calculate its RMS value.
okay so how can you calculate its rms value if the density function is given the probability density function is given mean square value of frequency deviation actually we should calculate like this let me write mean first of all let's calculate mean square value mean square value of delta f how do we calculate the mean square value of delta f then it is nothing but the expected value of delta f square that is whatever is delta f is that will be come inside the integration that is delta f is square and net its density function so the delta f is kf into that is k uh, when you write in the standard form okay when you write this in the standard form so 2 pi division and 2 pi you have divide so that is nothing but a k upon 2 pi is your kf and what is the value of frequency deviation kf into maximum value of message signal okay kf into maximum value of message signal so what you can do here mt the maximum value of mt is already given this is the maximum value of message signal huh? 1 upon 2 into root 2 pi so this is 1 upon 2 root 2 pi and e to the power minus m square by 8 dm that you have to solve and then you have to take the root over it when you solve it after that when you will take the root over it you will get rms value RMS value you will get when you take the root over minus infinity to infinity k upon 2 pi 1 upon 2 root 2 pi whole square because uh, first is the uh, delta f because of the delta f it will be square of it and e to the power minus m square by 8 then from after solving this integration and then after taking the root you will get the final answer and its answer will be uh, either C or D. I don't remember, but uh, the answer will be either C or D. A PCM uses a uniform quantizer which has a range minus V to V and it is followed by a 7 bit binary encoder. A zero mean signal applied to the quantizer and uh, extends over the entire range its prob uniform probability density. The ratio of the power to the quantization noise power and the output of the quantizer is so it is simple because uh, it is not saying the sinusoidal signal first thing sinusoidal thing no so the signal to quantization noise ratio is signal power divided by noise power So the signal power is it is extending from minus V to V. Okay, it is extending from minus V to V. So what should be the signal power? The entire is uniformly distributed. The signal is entirely the signal is entirely distributed among the maximum range so minus v to v and this will be 1 upon 2 v so what is the signal power that is nothing but the mean square value so how do you calculate the mean square value that is nothing but a b square plus a b plus a square divided by 3 so b is v here and a b means minus v into v and a square means minus v whole square divided by 3 
So this will get cancelled and we will get V square by 3. This is the signal power. Now how do you calculate the noise power? The noise power is delta square upon 12 because uniform quantization is given. So VH minus VL whole square divided by L square into 12. So the VH is highest value is V and the lowest value is minus V. So this is 12 L square which is 4 V square divided by 12 L square. So it is equal to V square upon 3 L square. So V square upon 3 L square. Now when you will solve it, okay, the signal to quantization noise power, signal to quantization noise power, signal power we have calculated V square by 3 and the noise power you have calculated as V square upon 3 L square. So this V square, V square get cancelled, 3 and 3 will get cancelled and we get L square. L square means 2 to the power 2n which is 2 to the power 14. So 2 to the power 14 we will get and what is the 2 to the power 14 in the dB? So 10 log 2 to the power 14 is 42 dB. The answer is 42 dB. That is your option C. Option C is coming 42 dB, right? The average information rate of the source, again we have to calculate like this only. Uh, so, Uh, let's calculate the entropy. Entropy is 3 times 1 by 4 log base to 4 and 2 times 1 by 8 log base to 8. That is your entropy. So this is 6 upon 4 plus 6 upon 8. It is 18 upon 8. Right? Ah, uh, two, two. So six upon four, yes, and two power three. So six upon eight, and when we take the LCM, it is eighteen upon eight. And what about the average information rate? Average information rate is R into H. That is nothing but a one upon sixty into eighteen upon eight. bits per second okay it should be multiplied now because it is the not the rate it is the time it is given so it should be multiplied here now tell me what should be answer 18 into 60 divided by 8 is 135 135 bits per second it is 1 upon 60 the rate is inverse of that because the r is the rate so every one upon 60 second the symbol is generating so we have to divide it actually by the unit also you can understand that the symbols per second multiplied with bits per symbol right and this 18 upon 8 is bits per symbol so the symbol per second, that second shouldn't be the denominator. So for that, 1 upon 60 will be there and hence we get 135, option C. Yes. A source has 256 symbols which are equiprobable and their successive transmissions are independent. If an AWGN channel has a bandwidth of 4 and signal to noise ratio 31, then the maximum rate for the minimum probability of error. Same question. The channel capacity should be greater than or equal to R. The channel capacity is B into log base to 1 plus signal to noise ratio. And it is greater than or equal to R. What is the R? R is nothing but a, the 256 symbols is given. Maximum rate symbol per second we want to calculate, right? Not in bits per second. That is, we want to calculate the small r. 
small r into h. So b is how much? 4 kilohertz. So 4 into 10 is power 3. Log b is 2, 1 plus signal to noise ratio that is 31. It is greater than this small r we want to calculate because we want to calculate symbol per second and all the symbols are equiprobable. So entropy is log base to 256. So from here we can calculate uh, it is 4 into 10 to the power 3 log base to 32 divided by log base to 256. should be greater than or equal to r. So, the maximum rate it is asking. So, what is the answer? This is 5, this is 8. 2, 5000 divided by 2, 2500. So, r should be less than or equal to 2500. Answer is D. Okay. A communication system operates in an AWGN channel employs a BPSK if EB upon N0 is 4 then what is the average bit error? So probability of error is because it is given in the form of error function. 1 minus complementary error function of root over 2 EB upon N0. I think it should be complementary error function. Let us check once. So, complementary error function is EB upon N0 is this 8. So, it is coming as 2 EB upon N0. EB upon N0 is 4. Okay, that is in the Q function. Na? Wait a second. Yes, first thing, first thing it should be complementary error function. So, according to the complementary error function, see, uh, in the complementary error function, the probability of error is 1 by 2 the complementary error function of root over eb upon four n uh, eb upon four n not eb upon n not if i write yes eb upon n not okay so, that is 1 by 2 complementary error function of EB upon N0 is 4 given. So, 1 by 2 complementary error function of 2. So, it should be 0 0.5 into 0 0.995. Okay, if I subtract it by 1, I think it is error function only. Let us check once. So, 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 it is 0 0.5 into 995342. Point nine nine now. Okay, yes, point nine. It is close to option D only. It is close to option D. Here also it is close to option D because when we calculate that it is coming approximately around option D. Okay, so this is your last question that you have to do. These few questions you have to do. Okay, so there are few questions that you can solve by your own. So these are the signals because these are bit lengthy questions. So that is why we are not taking it up because in the bar examination, the lengthy question will not come. But this is the statement kind of question that you can directly tell the answer. Okay, this is the direct statement answer question. And uh, this is also one of the question uh, which is directly you can tell which type of modulation is this. Okay. Which type of modulation is this? You can directly tell. EB, TB, FC are given. So, what do you think? Which kind of modulation is this?
This is something like a quadrature component 2 pi fc plus mi phi into tb. Okay, this is nothing but a cos of in bracket omega ct plus m pi by tb into t. So, which kind of modulation is this where m is integer and it is between 0 to 1. So, if we take m equal to 0, you will get 0 phase and you will take 1, then you will get another phase. So, it can be considered as a in between 0 to 1, if you will write, uh, there can be more than one phase and I think there should not be t. This t is written. Okay. So, I don't think that here it is t should be there. So, according to that you have to solve. And uh, this is uh, AM signal which is uh, constant k is given. Okay. And it, envelope detector we are using. If the average carrier power is large compared to the noise power and any DC component present at the analog detector, then the figure of merit. So, because the figure of merit part we do not study in the gate examination. So, that is why this part you can leave or you can first study and then you can take. Yes, it is QPSK actually. It is QPSK. Correct thinking. And uh, what about this uh, following statement is not true. This is statement is not true. A FM signal is produced when the modulating signal is integrated and applied to the phase modulator. So when the message signal is integrated and applied to the phase modulator, the FM signal is generated. So, this is the truth statement. For a sinusoidal FM carrier, it is possible that for a particular value of modulation index beta, all the power lies in the sideband frequency as no power lies in the carrier. So, there are certain values of beta for which the carrier power goes to 0 and these values of beta are 2.4, 5.5 etc. Okay, so these values of beta the carrier component goes to 0 that means all the power lies in the sideband only. So, that is also the truth statement when carrier to noise ratio is high and increase in the transmission bandwidth decreases the figure of merit of an FM system. So, this is actually 3 by 2 beta square that is kind of the figure of merit for the FM signal and similarly the last option a phase modulated signal is produced when a signal is differentiated and then applied to the FM modulator. So, this is also truth. So, this is the false statement and this is also the truth statement. So, here we are saying that the carrier to noise ratio is high then increase in transmission bandwidth increases it is saying this decreases but actually it increases the figure of merit because it is directly proportional to the beta and beta means delta f will also increase the beta will increase and hence the transmission bandwidth will also increase and then when we increase the carrier to noise ratio the transmission bandwidth increases the figure of merit of the system okay so this is the option c in this particular question the answer is option c Okay, so I have told you all the answers I guess this figure of merit so we are leaving it and uh, this you can easily solve this is the response of the match filter so for which kind of signal this kind of response will be there which is simply unit step signal and uh, 1 for 0 to t okay 31, 32, 33 yes. So this is it for the today's session and we will meet with the next session where we will be having the 15, super 15 questions according to the mark. Okay. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe the channel and like the video.